Welcome to the shop, Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, we're going to carve a pumpkin, but not a traditional one. For those of you that have followed me for a while, you know that when I get done with my Halloween orders, I usually sculpt or carve a pumpkin, but it's a messy process, they don't really last all that long, and so I wanted to try something new this year. And I was inspired when I went to Lowe's and I saw a bin of these foam pumpkins up near the door. I grabbed one, I looked at the tag, and the tag said carvable pumpkin. And I thought, that's very interesting. So I looked in to see kind of what that would entail. And I tell you what, I carved it, I painted it, I added some texture to the stem. This process was way easier than I anticipated. This is the kind of project just about anyone can do, and unlike a real pumpkin, it won't deteriorate, so you don't have to throw it away. You can use it again next year. So I wanna show you guys the steps that I took to carve this, paint it up, and texture it. We got a lot to do, so let's get started. Now I selected a pumpkin that was dent and tear-free, and the first thing you'll notice is a seam running up the side. You want to make sure to measure out exactly how much space you have on the face of the pumpkin, that way you can determine how big your design will be. With my measurements, I start drawing a basic design on my Bristol board. The design is pretty loose at first, but then I refine the shapes and tighten it up. This template is then cut out of the Bristol board using a utility knife. Now that I have the mouth template, I can use that to scale the nose and the eyes. And I'll of course have this pattern available for free over at sksprops.com. I tape my patterns to the front of the pumpkin and transfer my design over with a pencil. The pencil is hard enough to press slightly into the foam and give me a good indication of where I need to cut out. I also made a pattern for the back hatch so I could insert lights. To cut out my templates I'm using a multi-temp hot tool and I'll have a link for this one in the description section. And because we are heating foam I'm going to once again recommend to use your respirator and do this in a well ventilated area. I set the hot knife to the highest temperature and once it's good to go I plunge in and start following my template lines. Now this clip is set at a 2 times speed, but you can see just how easy this hot knife goes through the foam. Once the cuts are complete, I use a sculpting tool to press the piece down into the pumpkin. Just look at how clean those cuts are. Now notice that I'm starting in the corner with the tip of the blade, making sure that it goes all the way through the pumpkin surface, and then I pull away from the edge of the template. It's just so satisfying to watch how easy this hot knife cuts through this foam pumpkin. And if you successfully cut all the way through, it's relatively easy to pop out the pieces that you don't need. After the mouth is complete, I move on to the back panel, and I could have used a metal straight edge for this, but it's on the back of the pumpkin, so I just decided to cut this freehand. I ended up using a ruler through the mouth to pop out the back section. A small notch is cut out of the bottom of the panel, that way it can easily be removed. Moving on to the eyes, just like the mouth, I trace my template lines, and once complete, I pop out the section I don't need. Because I wasn't fighting to cut out the material, this part of the process was really easy and very therapeutic. Any places where there was a little bit of foam buildup from melting, I just knocked that down with some sandpaper. So you can see I finished cutting out all the templates for my foam pumpkin here, and the hot knife that I used on this project was way easier than I thought it was going to be. It did a fantastic job cutting out all the intricate little shapes for the face of this pumpkin. And let's be honest, this is a lot less messy than dealing with the real thing. Now your project could just be complete at this point, but there's a couple other things that I want to add to it 
First off being the fact that I think he's a little too clean. So I'm gonna add some acrylic paints because I think my pumpkin should be a little bit more worn and weathered. To give my pumpkin a little more depth, I'm gonna be using the Createx Transparent Airbrush Paints. Taking some of the orange and the red, I mix that with the reducer to make sure that it flows better. This paint is then poured into my Iwata airbrush and I'm just trying to hit all the low spots on the skin, also around the eyes, nose, and mouth. The stem of this pumpkin is a little weak as far as detail goes, so I'm going to take my Dremel rotary tool along with a stone bit and give it some additional texture. Now the rotary tool will carve away this foam really fast, so be sure not to take too much. To reinforce the color at the base of the stem, I'm going to be using some Liquitex Heavy Body Raw Umber. The paint is applied just around the bottom of the stem and then feathered up. To give my pumpkin a little bit of a dirt effect, I grab a 1 inch mop brush and I use that same raw umber and I lightly dust the surface here and there. This breaks it up just enough so it doesn't look uniform. Now I want to show you my successes and failures, and this is kind of a failure. So I bought this pump off of Amazon, which is awesome. It's LED and it sends out a mist but it goes through water so fast that it didn't really work for this application. I'm gonna to have to think of a different project for it. The water bowl and pump are placed inside the pumpkin and all is going well, it looks amazing, but it only runs for about a minute and a half to two minutes before the water level is low enough that it trips the sensor. But don't worry, I have a backup plan. I have this sticky back LED coil of lights that's gonna work out great. The LED lights are placed inside the pumpkin and the back panel is pressed on. This also looks awesome, but what if you wanted to have a larger light source and you wanted it diffused? Another option is to take a plain piece of paper and place it inside the pumpkin. Then you can grab some tape or hot glue and affix it to the top. The LED lights are placed back in the pumpkin and as you can see the paper diffuses the light source over the entire face. These are just a couple different options for your own pumpkin. So you guys can see the steps that I took to transform a normal foam pumpkin into a creation of my own. Now, hopefully you guys can glean some inspiration from this video. Go out, get a foam pumpkin, and make something that's unique to you. And if you do, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creation. And if you guys are enjoying this Halloween content, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. And until next time, thanks for stopping by.